able to welcome back to my channel I know I went away again I promise this time I'm here to stay I'm gonna make so many videos in the next few days that you're gonna get tired of seeing this face or a face that looks slightly like it because I guess the face changes sometimes <laughs> but I promise I'm back I'm here I have so much bookish stuff to share with you guys and I'm gonna start it off like I guess we start off most returns to booktube with a haul I went to the Goodwill, I bought some books, I went to the library, I picked up some more books, and so I'm gonna share them with you. So I went to the Goodwill and I saw this exciting little section on French books, old French books. It looks like someone emptied a library, maybe an estate sale or something. I'm so excited about those little books. They're old, they are so old. These books I know have a story to tell. Aside from the story in their pages, also, just the book itself the book's history is a story and i want to own these books i'm going to keep watching and when these books go on sale i'm probably going to go back and get a few of them there's some marcel proust um collect uh, marie scondo in french why am i telling you about the books i took a video roll clip So that was my thrift store experience. I didn't buy the red stickered books, but I will go back someday and pick up a few of them for my shelves because yeah, French books, old French books, I'm in love. The Marcel Proust book especially is one that I want because it was mentioned in A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, which was one of my favorite books of last year, one of my favorite books of all time in which now the teenage girl, she writes her journal and hides it within the pages of a Marcel Proust book. And so I want that book. I want it. I will buy it someday. But for now, I bought these four books today. I bought Nothing to be Frightened of by Julian Barnes because it was written by the same author who wrote The Sense of an Ending, which is a Booker Prize novel that I just read recently in which the narrator is philosophizing about suicide and how people take charge of their own life in that way, which is not an idea that I agree with. However, I did enjoy the author's musings about the aggregates that make up life and how we come to that accumulation. So I'm looking forward then to reading this book, which is about an older or middle-aged or older man who is contemplating his own impending death, looking at the death of his parents and his own religious and spiritual experience as he's been growing up at some point he was an atheist and now as an older man he's looking back at the lives and medical history of his parents and seeing his own the inevitability of his own death and thinking about what that means and whether he should be fearful or not which i am so looking forward to this author writing about this story so that was the first book that I got at the Goodwill. I also picked up this book, Saturday by Ian McEwan, who's the author of Amsterdam, which I read last month. In this one, McEwan talks about how once you've set in motion a chain of events, you are no longer really able to control the outcome. And in this one, it's I think the story all takes place in one day where we meet this surgeon in the morning he wakes up kind of suddenly he's naked 
and contemplating his own place in life and how the events of the day reflect on his history and everything that's happening around him politically and how life can change for better or for worse based on very small actions that one might take and so these two books seem to have very similar themes i enjoyed a lot of the writing in here it was a very sparsely written story where on, in under 200 pages he dealt with a very important and relevant topic and so this one he gives himself a lot more room this one is almost 300 pages and so I'm looking forward to seeing how he tackles a similar story um, dealing with the issue of solitude within relationships but I'm looking forward to seeing how when he expands his writing whether the story is still as tightly told this one won him the Booker Prize. We'll see about this one. <laughs> I also got The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This I read earlier this year, a different uh, edition. So this is a movie edition I picked up at the thrift store because I didn't have my own copy and I like to have my own copies of books that I've read and enjoyed. I read it from the library and so now I have my own. This won the Man Booker Prize because it is about a butler who has lost his previous employer and is now working for an American. And after three decades of working as a butler, his own father working as a butler and dying in the service to Lord Darlington, this butler is now reflecting on his own life he has an opportunity to take a drive um, physically but also go through some figurative trip down memory lane examining a lot of the choices that he's made and seeing for the first time maybe some of the impact on how his choices have affected history not just his own history within his family and the relationships that he's been a part of, but also how he has helped his master accomplish things that he himself might not have been comfortable with if he had known the extent of his involvement. This one was a very moving study on relationships and how we don't necessarily accomplish the things that we set out to do. That sometimes when we get so focused on one thing, we're really accomplishing another thing, even though that's not our intention. And I enjoyed this book so much. I'm still thinking about this story. And so when I saw it at the bookstore, I had to get it, even though I don't usually love movie covers. This is a book that I wanted to have on my shelves now, even if it's one that I replace later. And especially, I want to collect all the Booker Prize winning novels, so this is probably going to have a place on my shelves for a long time. And the last book that I got from the thrift store was A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahira. And this is about four friends who, after college, moved to New York in search of their fame and fortune. And about the, I guess, different experiences that they each have in their chosen vocation. And the families that you are either born into or the families that you create based on the friends that you spend a lot of your time with and have these experiences with and develop bonds with people with whom you'll probably share some of the more significant moments of your adult life. So this is a huge book. It is over 800 pages. So I don't know when I'm gonna get to this one. Sometime later this year, I'm going to set aside some time and just read all the big books on my shelves and maybe A Little Life is one that I'll read at that point. Maybe I should set aside some time every month to read a big book, but last time I read a big book, 830 pages, it took me the better part of a month, so we'll see. But I bought it. I've been hearing so many things about this book. Everybody on BookTube, it seems, has read this book except me. And I got it for a dollar. I And it's in great condition. I couldn't leave it. I don't know when I'll read it, but it's mine. And so those are the four books that I bought for my bookshelves. I mean, the four books that I bought to read. I'm just joking. I've read one of them already, so one out of four is not bad. The others will probably spend a little time on my bookshelf before I actually get to them. I also picked up these five books from the library. These are five more Man Booker Prize winning novels that I want to read soon. I've been, I was doing the Man Booker 50 challenge. That challenge ended at the end of May. 
am gonna keep reading until I finish all of the books that won the Man Booker Prize. I think I told you that in my last video. The 1972 winner was G by John Berger, and this one's about intimacy and looking for intimacy in history. It tells a story of Don Juan's conquests and what the events leading up to and leading out of those encounters could be what is the cause and effect of these romantic encounters but it puts it in the context of history and so i'm looking forward to reading this i don't think it's an erotic novel of any kind although it does talk a lot about uh, sexual relationships so i'm looking forward to seeing how this book became a man booker prize winning novel especially given that this was written in the 1970s so this is the 1972 winner in 1974, Nadine Gordimer won along with another novel called The Holiday. She won with The Conservationist, which is set in South Africa. And it's about a rich man who starts to lose everything. His wife and children or child move away. His workers also rise up against him. And so this formerly rich man finds himself at the intersection of conservation and self-preservation. I'm fascinated by the cover of this book where the frayed end of a rope is made to look like a tree. And I've never read anything by Nadine Gordimer, and she is a Nobel Prize winner for literature. So Booker Prize winner and Nobel Prize winner, this checks a lot of boxes on my extended list of books and authors that I want to read. So looking forward to this one as I am to all of these, I suppose. In 1975, Ruth Prower Javala won the Man Booker Prize for Heat and Dust. Ruth is a German-born woman of Polish ancestry, and she married an Indian man. The novel is about an English woman who's married to an English man and who is seduced by an Indian prince and about how her escapades impact her husband and her family. And so that story is intriguing to me because I wonder how much of the story is maybe loosely based on this author's life. But that's just me always reading into things even when you don't need to. But I'm looking forward to this and maybe looking forward to hearing some of the story about the story behind this story. Another short novel, 180 pages or so, Man Booker Prize winning novel as compared to these three huge tomes that have won the Man Booker Prize. I'm gonna talk about that in an upcoming video. In 1984, Anita Bruckner won the Man Booker Prize for her novel Hotel du Lac, which is about a novelist whose life starts to imitate the fiction that she's been writing. And she runs away from her life, escapes to Switzerland, and stays in a hotel called Hotel du Lac. Reading the synopsis of this novel reminded me of this novel. Is this a parody of this one? But again, this is me just reading into things. Shade. Shade! But listen, they both won the Man Booker Prize, so no shade required. The last book that I'm going to tell you about in my little library hall is another book that is set in New Zealand, like The Luminaries, which won the Man Booker Prize. In 1985, Kerry Holm won the Man Booker Prize for The Bone Project. And this is about an artist who is Maori and European mix. And she's estranged from her family and living kind of with her art, which remind, the cover reminds you of maybe some tattoo inking. And eventually she encounters this young man who's speechless and so not able to communicate with the world. And from their interaction, she meets and develops some kind of a relationship with his father, who is Maori. And so I think this novel is a bit of an allegory for the political interactions between Maori and Europeans in New Zealand. And so I don't know too much of that history, so this should be a great fictional look at real life events, I hope. And that is it. And so those are my five Man Booker Prize winning novels that I got from the library and the four books that I got at the thrift store this morning. So there's gonna be lots of bookish stuff to talk about on this channel, which is how you know there's gonna be more videos. So subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I post. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which one of these books you'd like me to read pretty soon so we can talk some more about it. If you've read one of these and wanna give me a little bit of a warning or uh, you need to read this book right now, 
let me know in the comments and let me know what you're reading so you know maybe we can talk about that too so we'll talk to all there and until next time happy reading bye life by hanya yanagahi yani <laughs> hanya yanagahi and the last book that i got from the thrift store was a little life by hanya this y word